it looks like a peaceful morning on the Brazos. Oh, but that belies the intensity that is in Waco. Waco, known for fixer-upper. Baylor's reclamation guided by a golden rule. Do unto Oklahoma what Oklahoma has done unto the Big 12. This is a day for upstarts and perfection, blue bloods and survival, rivalries, trophy games, but the sail gates bringing the intensity that only a huge November showdown can bring. Five teams remain unbeaten, and that good old Baylor line is one of them. And the win of the Big 12, you've got to run through the Sooners. You might have to do it twice. The freshmen run out, ready for that human tunnel to welcome in the Bears and get ready to sick them tonight. Game day, live from Waco, Texas, is built by the Home Depot, proud sponsor of college football's premier pregame show. This jewel of a stadium on the banks of the Brazos will be filled like no other time in its history tonight. They're expecting the largest crowd in McLean Stadium history, and if the fire marshal would cooperate, they'd probably have the largest crowd ever to see a Baylor home football game. You see all the students out here, there are about 14,000 or so undergrads. They tell me that they've had 11,000 student tickets sold. Many of them are gonna go out on that burn area underneath the wow. Jumbotron just to get close to Baylor in Oklahoma tonight. Glad to have you with us. College game day back in Waco. Yes, Reese Davis, yes sir. Kevin Howard, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herbstreit. How about this story of Baylor still being undefeated and we're back here amongst the Bear faith? You know, not only the Bears are defeated, yeah. but to think about where they have come from oh. to where they are today with Matt Rule and his leadership. His first year, they're one and eleven with what he inherited. To now, he last year seven and six, and now they're nine and zero. Oh, have their fans fired up, and they're right in the mix of this Big Twelve and staying in the playoff race. Yeah, but no wonder Oklahoma is a ten-point favorite over our beloved Bears. <laughs> yeah, Oklahoma has won eighteen straight November games. Right, the last. Team that beat him was Baylor. Mm -hmm. Go Bears! <laughs> <laughs> so he's open. Bears. That's he's open <laughs> well, coach, in the minds of some people, Baylor's season starts today. They don't respect the teams that they beat. They don't respect their undefeated record. But I tell you what, if they take care of business tonight mm -hmm. against the Sooners, 
we may see a meteoric rise in the rankings from the Baylor. Yes. They're sitting there at number 13 right now for yep, a 9-0 yep. Power 5 team. That's the lowest ranking in the college football playoff era, but the team that is number one, the new number one, according to the selection committee, LSU on the road at Ole Miss. Yeah, LSU on the road. Of course, they had their huge win last week, celebrated it for three or four days. I just hope the players are locked in and ready to put that big win after eight years of losing to Bama, put it behind them. Get ready to take on Ole Miss. Ole Miss can run the football. Plumley, this new quarterback, is a kind of a dual threat guy. Ely, a true freshman, can run. They'll challenge LSU's defense today. How about Wake against Clemson? Last time we saw Wake, man, they struggled against the Hokies. Jamie Newman, 16 for 35. He threw two picks. They couldn't run the ball, 63 yards on the ground. They're going to find some offense quick. Because I tell you what, Clemson, those guys are on a mission. Their whole mantra right now is to kick butt and take names. Minnesota and Iowa, 9-0 Minnesota is a talk of the nation after beating number four Penn State. Quarterback Tanner Morgan threw three touchdown passes and Minnesota's defense forced turnovers. Iowa's next. You better watch out, Minnesota. But Arizona against Oregon. The last time we saw the Ducks, man, they put 56 points up against USC. Justin Herbert has 24 touchdowns on the season, just two interceptions. And going up against a Wildcats defense that's last in the conference in total defense and scoring. Teams are averaging 37 points a game against the Wildcats. Zaz, you want an old school SEC game? Georgia at Auburn in Jordan Hare. Of course, that Auburn defense has been great. So is Georgia. It's a low scoring game. Which one of these offenses has a chance to make a play to make the difference in this game? Bo Nix or Jake Fromm and his group of wide receivers? It's going to be a great one. Kirk, offense is making plays. That's what Baylor needs against Oklahoma. Charlie Brewer, Denzel Mim, they have to get chunk plays. The offense has just two touchdowns in regulation the last two. You know that the defense is going to be good. Will it be Jameson Houston who gets on C.D. Lamb as often as he was on Jalen Rager? Probably not as often as last week against the TCU star. And can they slow down Hurts from running? What does Lincoln Riley have cooked up? Here's Tom Renault. Coach up against the number one rush defense in the conference. You guys have run the ball effectively. What's the challenge there? Well, we've got to, you know, we've got to set the tone up front. You know, that's been a huge part of it for us in the last couple of November runs that we've been able to make as we've played so well up front. That'll certainly be a big part of this one. And, you know, being able to run the ball in those November games is always huge. Another big part of those runs has been turnover creation. That has been a challenge lately. How do you coach to turn that around? Well, hopefully we can build on the final play last week, you know, getting a turnover on the on the uh, deciding two point play there at the end. You know, turnovers tend to come in, in, in stretches, you know, and, and hopefully our, our runs coming. And so, uh, you know, we've really emphasized it with our guys. They understand how important it is going into these last several games. Good luck to you. We appreciate the time, coach. All right. Thanks, Tom. Lincoln, Tom, thank you very much. You see how Oklahoma has dominated Baylor when the Sooners have been ranked in the top ten. Big story between Baylor and Minnesota both being undefeated, but note that game at the bottom. Something's got to give, oh, right? You, well, actually, not really, because that is a very resistible force in the Northwestern offense, which is awful, and the very movable object, which is the UMass defense. You know UMass scoring defense is so bad. Yeah. They're giving up two more touchdowns per game than the 129th ranked defense. Oh, we'll wow. get to them soon That's enough. Bad. The real question, though, is yeah. will the magic continue with these two upstart unbeatens, Baylor here, yeah. and then Minnesota with a tough game in Iowa? I tell you what, I want to focus on Minnesota. We're going to talk about Baylor a lot in the show, but Minnesota, a team that beat Penn State, but they're on the road, and they're the underdog against Iowa. So now P.J. Fleck, he's in the perfect position because throughout the week, Pats on the back. They had the meteoric rising in the rankings. Everyone's loving them. But now you're on the road. You're an underdog. They don't respect you. He can play the disrespect card. This is a huge rivalry. I think that Minnesota is going to handle their business today against Iowa. It's a perfect time of the year for an upset. Ranked teams like Minnesota, Georgia, and Oklahoma all play trap games mm. away from home. I'm predicting two or three get it. Wow. Yeah, I said two oh. of the three will get it. Well, November is where it starts to become emotional yeah, as much as anything. The psychological warfare of these teams trying to maintain it. Speaking of that, you know, there are four teams that last year got bombed by teams that they play today, and they're trying to keep their New Year's Six hopes alive. 
Auburn plays Georgia. They got blown out by Georgia last week. It's a different story maybe this year. Florida, Missouri. Florida got blown out by Missouri a year ago. Oregon and Arizona. Arizona blew Oregon out last year. Now they've got a chance to avenge that. And then Baylor. Baylor and yeah. Oklahoma. Baylor lost big last year. They got a chance this year, obviously, sure to turn do. things around. 66-33. Yeah. The turnaround yeah. yes. oh. has been remarkable oh, cool. for Baylor. I think Auburn's interesting. We're going to talk yeah, about exactly. them in the college football playoff discussion. Yep. Tuesday night, I said that they were the most impactful non-contender. Yeah. After yeah. further review, as yes. they say, Auburn might be a periphery contender, but they're a contender. I mean, yeah, if they yeah, were yeah, to beat yeah. Georgia, Georgia and, Al and Alabama, Alabama. Exactly. Yeah. they already, yeah. already beat Oregon. No. Yeah, and no, no, they no. Yeah, yeah, they'd, they'd, say no. No. They, they'd, they'd be the, they'd, they'd <laughs> have a lucid <laughs> discussion. Plenty of college yes, football <laughs> playoff discussion coming your way. How Baylor can make it in there as well, and Alabama. Will we see Tua Tungvaloa? They're going to warm him up, see what the mobility's like against Mississippi State. That's uh, at noon Eastern time following college game day. Penn State coming off its first loss. Back home against Indiana. Tom Allen said, don't believe you can beat the Nittany Lions? Don't get on the bus. Indiana hasn't had a lot of success there. Hotty toddy. Old oh, Miss with their old rival and their old coach. Coach Young <laughs> coming in. Number one, LSU. All of that coming up. We'll have a conversation with Ed Ogeron a little bit later on in College Game Day. Inside this edition of College Game Day, what's the difference between a world-class musician and OU wide receiver C.D. Lamb? Not much. Gene Wojciechowski tells us C.D. can do a little now you see him, now you don't. We'll show you some of that. Plus, what's it like to be just... Average college football fan, minding your own business, and then you become a viral sensation. Maria Taylor introduces you to those who have become college football memes. For Halloween, I dressed up as PJ Fleck. He's cool. <laughs> you know what? I thought oh. we, we need to put a little hey. chip lap up in this piece. Sure. <laughs> There's some guest chip pickers. And Baylor's own Chip and Joanne, Joanne. Gaines. Yay! I told them they needed a move-in ready house, house, lap of luxury, right beside the great big <laughs> corso. We'll uh, take care of you. Oh, yeah, oh, there? Oh, oh. Yeah. Wait, I'm seeing double. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the two bears. Yeah. 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 Yeah.